Hello, everyone. What? Wait a minute. Why do we have two scraps here? Because last time we got to Act 3. We have two additional scraps here. Is it because when uh, we saw when we got to Act 3, we had distance? And it showed these two? Is that... Like, in a toy piece of paper, is that why it's like this? Because the Tonico is all just one. This one is split off into two. Huh. Okay. We're gonna apply for, and thanks to Normia pressuring the principal, I'm sure, is granted leave for the rest of the term for exceptional extracurricular activities. She has to make it up for it during summer vacation, but she doesn't seem to mind. When we'll still be able to eat and sleep at school, of course, she just doesn't have to go to classes. I'm not entirely sure if I envy her or not. It all makes me feel anxious somehow. It's the last day of school for Rin. I feel like I should send her off with a word of encouragement. Or at least say something. It was sort of due to my influence that she decided to dive head first into this after all. My class ends a good 20 minutes early, so I walk down to the lobby and buy a can of juice. Then sit down on a bench and wait for Rin. I put out a novel for my bag and search for the place where I was. Time stretches comfortably over the warm afternoon. While I idly sip my orange juice and read a few chapters of the book, the plot doesn't seem to advance at all, but it's all the same for me. <laughs> the bell rings to end the school day and students shuffle to club meetings or outside. Nobody noticed me, sitting on the bench with my nose in the novel. I keep watch for Rin, but I don't see a familiar face or red tinted hair passing by. Check my watch. 20 minutes past the end of class, when the lobby has all but emptied of people again. Even Rin should have managed to get out of class. But either I missed her walking by or she never came downstairs. Perhaps she went to the art club room for some last minute things instead. Or got held back by her strict homeroom teacher. I haven't really waited that long, but I haven't grown tired of it already, and I decided to go find it myself. I stuff my book back in the bag and throw the now empty juice can in a trash bin, then climb upstairs. The hallway is eerily quiet, as there are no club rooms apart from the art room nearby. I check there first, but not even the teacher is in. Coming back towards the stairwell, I quietly knocked on the door of 3-4 and pushed the door open to peek inside. You know some beams cross the classroom. Falling across the floor, the dust and chalk floating slowly in the air make the light almost palpable. The entire room bathes in the gentle light shining through the windows, washing the shadows away. Only one person is inside the classroom. She fell asleep! <laughs> Rin sits in what I assume is her seat, next to the window in the third row. Her head rests against the desk. I wonder if she slept through it all. Apparently not. Even Emmy had the heart, or maybe the capacity, capability, to wake her up. Close the door quietly, walking past the neat, even row of desks. I go over to where she sits. Rin? Not that suddenly so dry that the words came out as a tiny whisper. She doesn't answer, so I set my back down on the floor next to hers and lean over her at, over her to look at her face. Rin's eyes are peacefully closed, the long eyelashes projecting the thin shadows onto her cheeks. Her mouth is slightly open, letting me hear the quiet sound of her breathing. Her usually messy hair is even more so today, lying in complete disarray over half of her face and forehead. Her bag is lying at her feet like a forgotten ragdoll. A few books and pens have fallen out of it near her seat. The scene makes me smile a little. I touch Rin's head lightly, sweeping a few stray hairs off her ear. Her hair feels warm against my palm. Rin stirs and I reject my hand on reflex, feeling embarrassed for touching her so casually. She looks so vulnerable, like any sleeping person. Is it impossible not to feel fondness towards her? I sit on the desktop of whoever is in front of Rin, then draw the window slightly open to get some fresh air in. Hopefully I'll wake her up, and I won't need to resort to cruder methods. 
<laughs> she doesn't wake up, but I don't really expect I didn't really expect her to. Looking at her makes me feel tired as well. To be honest, I wouldn't mind a quick nap either. I could tell myself with leaning against the larger window. <sighs> the glass is warm against my ear and cheek. These windows face west towards the setting afternoon sun. The afternoon light is slowly melting into Rin's burn hair, softening her outline so that she seems to be fading into her surroundings. The minute twitches of her muscle, her hair swaying in the air current, the even rhythm of her breathing, it all gives a strong impression of a dreaming girl. Like all sleeping people, Rin looks like she's away from this world, in some distant dream country. With her, it doesn't feel so obvious that she would ever come back. She seems so detached from her surroundings even when she's awake. In fact, she has the same kind of air around her when... The realization hits my consciousness without warning. Vin sometimes looks like she... Like that when she is painting. Her focused expression gives the same feeling of being on the other side of some imaginary gap at, as looking at her sleeping face does. I feel a pain in my chest. There's no way I can close that gap to be on the same level as her. It hurts. Even though I know that it's impossible for two people to truly understand each other. But Rin? She's almost literally in another world when she's talking about art. Thinking about art. Or making art. It's a world that I, or anyone else really, can't share with her. It's like the world of dreams. Rin still doesn't show any signs of waking up. So I'm faced with the decision to either rouse her myself, or wait for her to wake it up on her own. I chose the latter. Waiting is something I'm good at. I found that out during my hospitalization, but even the hospital ward ha was more lively than the school after classes are over. The only sounds in this place are the loud ticking of the clock above the door and the distant voices of students down on the grounds. Genuine summer breeze blows inside of the window I cracked open, full of warmth and carrying the scent of light. I look outside to see where it come, came from, but I dazzled almost instantly. The window glass seems to trap all the sunlight within, making it painful to look away, to look that way. All I can glimpse through the window are the dark silhouettes of the trees and the wall around the campus against the setting sun's radiance. As I turn back to watch Vin, she starts again. A single tear forms down from her corner of her eye. Slowly making its way across her face before it falls onto the desk. It's tiny, barely a droplet, but it captivates me. Another tear follows the first, then a third. Some of anxiety overcomes me, petrifying me on the spot. So strange, seeing Rin's face peacefully as she sleeps, at the same time as tears stream down her cheeks, widening the wooden desktop she rests her head on. I don't know what to do, so do nothing. I just watch the tears roll down one by one on down her face. I wonder what she's dreaming about. Rin wakes up after one final fledge, or perhaps because of the tears. She sits up tight and yawns so excessively that it looks like she uh, <laughs> the jaw might dislocate. Ah. She knows my presence, but her reaction is more like the lack of any reacting at all. Just an acknowledgement, no subtle gasp or anything. Hello. Good morning. She's so groggy, she can't even return my smile. I somehow can't stretch, <laughs> to be entirely honest. Ah. We notice her wet cheeks and quickly wipes them on the shoulder of her, of his, her shot. It seems she isn't at all surprised or flustered by them. You cried in your sleep. A bad dream? No, it's nothing like that. It's something I learned to do. From other people. It's a funny story. I'll tell you later. A second thought, not really that funny at all. I guess I won't tell you. Did you want something, or did you c just come to watch me sleep? Like a good boy. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see you after classes. Oh, well, it's after classes now, and I am seeing you right here. Yeah, I just wanted to say good luck or something. I figured the upcoming weeks are going to be a lot of work for you. Thanks. Ben yawns again a big few times. I feel weird. Did didn't really sleep much last night at all. Butterflies in your stomach? What? No. I mean, yes. I know what that means. Butterflies. Don't really feel good. Don't really feel so good now. I'll be fine. You are so confident. Someday it will bite you in the ear. 
I'll look forward to it. <laughs> I think I have to go. I promised Miss Sayonji that I'd go there straight after school. And now it's after school. Is it okay if I go by sometime? I guess you're planning to walk long hours, so I prefer... So if you prefer to avoid distractions, it's okay. It's not a distraction. Not like any. Don't bring her with you, though. I wouldn't like that this time. Go to stay away. <laughs> I see. <laughs> All right, then. Rin stands up. Silently walks to the door, with me following behind. Schools empty hallways, devoid of the usual crowd of students. Feel very lonely. It's only a few hours since school ended. But the building seems to be all but deserted. Our footsteps are all that intrudes upon the stillness of the hallways. The change is sudden, but it shows how the building is just an empty shell. Dead without its students and teachers to liven it up. It's like the school has become a private world for just the two of us. This isolated place filled with silence and chalk dust. I'm going. I'm, I'm going to change. She says this out of the blue while we walk down the stairs from the third floor. It makes me wonder how she views this challenge that lies ahead of her. That's what people must do. Sometimes. It's the last thing we say to each other that day. You know there's so much that we could talk about. Even those words drown in the all-encompassing silence. Disappearing into the stagnant air as if they were never said. I was like, you trying to steal some hay from Lola? You have your own, you know. The next Monday is marked by a strange emptiness that grips me. Caused by the knowledge that I won't be able to see Rin wherever I want to anymore. This hollow feeling is a little bit disconcerting. But I make it to the afternoon all the same. My last class is, in a word, terrible. It's not that the lesson is that bad, it is, however, boring, and it's so hard in the classroom that I feel like I'm melting. The air conditioner is either broken or turned off, and the windows are open. It makes no difference, since the air outside is completely still. Only the jumping of uh, cicadas carries inside. Swaddling heat permeates the room. Students and teachers alike are in an almost delirious state. I just want to stand up and walk out of here without caring what the teacher or anyone else says. I can see I'm not the only one with these thoughts, too. Next to me, Misha is shamelessly holding her skirt up a bit and fanning air in with her notebook. Only Shizune seems to be as cool as always, sitting with her back perfectly straight. Arms folded on her chest, her eyes fixed on the equation scrolling on the backboard. I keep shooting yearning glances at my watch, but it doesn't help the time go by any faster. It's funny. I remember how badly I wanted to get out of the hospital and go back to school. Now all I go think about is the upcoming summer vacation and freedom from classes and homework. Perhaps it's human nature to think only of the situation at hand. Finally, the bell rings. We leave my classmates and I burst out into the hallway, already crowded by students from our neighboring classes. I suppose Emmy Dimitriv uh, uh, figure stands by and walks up to her. Hey there! She smiles sweetly, clearly happy to see me. Hey, so, what's up? Is your classroom super hot too? Yeah, it is. I was going to melt in there. Nothing else is really happening though. Feeling a bit weird now that Ren's on her great adventure, or whatever you want to call it. Emmy's face crack. <laughs> Emmy's face cracks in a wider smile as she jumps up and down enthusiastically. Isn't it great? I'm so happy for her. I bet everyone will like her paintings, and she'll steal a lot of them and make piles of money! Yeah, I'm sure it'll work out great. I'm totally sulking at her, though. She hops angrily and places her hand firmly on her hips, even letting a little anger seep into her voice. It doesn't quite have the impact she probably... Probably, it doesn't have quite the impact she probably hoped for, but I say nothing. Why is that? She said that she doesn't want me to go see her! Oh yeah, she mentioned that. I guess she prefers not to be distracted. I can understand that. I don't think I'm that much of a distraction. Besides, I'm sure she'll forget about sleeping and eating properly if someone's up there telling her to do it. Sometimes she's like that. Gets completely fixated on whatever and drops everything else. But it makes me worry, you know. Is she going to be alright? Such friendship. I wonder. I wonder if she thinks I'm annoying. I'm pretty sure that's not the case at all. 
Let me shake her head, looking amused. I'm not sure if she's joking or not. She has these weird ideas about a lot of stuff. Things just make sense to her in a totally different way than they do to me. I can't even remember all the weird stuff she talked about over all this time. I don't think Vin does either, really. She's the type of person who would forget her own head if it wasn't attached to her shoulders. That's why I can't leave her alone. Is that weird? She leans against the wall, managing to look distraught. Yet still cheerful as always. I get a strange feeling about this. As though I was talking to two people at the same time. How would I know? Everyone's weird in some way. But if that's yours, it's a very nice way. At least I can understand what you're talking about. Unlike Rin. <laughs> What's the time? I have no idea what's going on inside her head either. I mean giggles. Not in agreement. I think it's okay if you don't understand her. That's how she usually is. Amy stands up straight, brushing the hem of her skirt and straightening the waistline. She laughs awkwardly. <laughs> well, we ended up talking pretty seriously. What's up with you, Sal? Why'd you bring this up? Oh, sorry. I didn't really mean to get into this sort of discussion either. I just... I don't know. I have this weird feeling about lately about Rin. I don't know why. I feel a bit guilty. Bringing up someone like this for no reason except my own anxiety. I'll be fine, don't worry about it. Then the enemy clutches my wrist and twists it so that she can see what time it is for my watch. Oh damn, is this late already? I should really go. There's a meeting with the rest of the track team at the field. It's not going to be fun in this heat. We're going to sweat like pigs, but I promise to be there. Bye bye! She skips downstairs, leaving me wondering if what I said, or what Vince said rather, hurt or not. Maybe what Eddie herself said hurt her the most. Come to that. So in the end, even the person closest to Rin is just as far apart as her as everyone else. From her as everyone else. Wonder if Rin herself ever feels that distance. I feel like I was drifting away from this world too during my hospitalization. I feel anxious and depressed, and even now, I sometimes still do. But I fight against her without all I got. If Rin has been on that side of the divide for her l whole life, I can't imagine how she could not be lonely. That is, she is truly different. I refuse to belong to that other place, but maybe she's found comfort there. Like Emmy, I have a club meeting of my own, so I head straight to the art club room at the end of the hallway. Only a few members are present today, so the booze even more laid back than usual. Vin is off working on her exhibition project, but I wonder if the rest are simply just playing hooky, defeated by the heat. I half assly sketch something with a piece of graphite, but do a poor job of it. My fingertips are turning pitch black from holding the graphite and smudging it on the paper, accidentally and on purpose. I improved a little, but Vin's level is still far beyond my reach. Eventually, Nomia comes in and makes his way around the room. Checking on what we're doing and giving comments on the works in progress. She sits behind me and bends closer to look at my poor sketch. Trying to take a few pointers from Tetsuka, huh? Have you? Um, well, I looked at how she draws, but I haven't exactly asked for advice, though. No. Let's see here! The character picks up the piece of graphite from my hand and lightly draws some faint, barely visible lines over my sketch to illustrate places that need improvement. I already feel frustrated about not seeing the obvious flaws before, but. With a couple of careless seeming flicks of the wrist, Nomiya has made them plain as day. Shooting up, he throws a savvy glance at the seat where Rin usually sits. <laughs> Such a nostalgic feeling! Almost like a bird flying from the nest! I'll miss Tezuka when she graduates. It begins from here, you know? Nearly makes my eyes a little misty. Do you really think she has a chance to make her a big break with the exhibition? Nomiya looks for my sketch, adjusting his glasses. He rubs his chin, looking contemptively. Why not? It's not like she's going to be an overnight smash hit or anything, but getting the word out there is very important. Connections are pure gold. The most important thing to gain is if she is to become an artist. Word of, word of mouth is very popular in these circles. She has some advantages, <laughs> like her young age and technique. You know the feat. People will be naturally curious about extraordinary things like that. His words have an unpleasant ring to them. I hate how much he focuses on the feet. 
Am I just exploiting her disability to make her more popular? Sounds fishy. Ah, now, now! It's not like that at all! Think of it from another perspective! Like an artist! Would you rather have Tezuka hide herself completely from public view? As if her condition was something shameful? <coughs> Jeez, I can't keep up this voice. <laughs> Some people will call it an exploitation, if you promote that aspect, or discrimination if you hide it. All considered, we're just being honest about it. There's nothing wrong with that, right, my boy? I guess so. Brilliant! It's true that disability always has some sort of implications in society. Off the nasty ones, but pushing things under the carpet won't help us at all. I just say we'll saddle her side of the issue with delicacy. I've known her since art <laughs> school, and she's most reliable. Why is she going so far for Vince's sake? Because it's you who asked? Oh, she has her own reasons too. <laughs> just this old man, she's more kind hearted than she looks. Ah, but don't let her know I said that. He gives me a big wink and covers his mouth with his hand, as if to push the remark back in. I don't like that fate. I remember the curious way Miss Seonji looked at Vin almost the entire time during our visit in the gallery. It's like that woman was trying to imprint everything about her into her memory. Oh, maybe it was that Vin reminded her of something else. Mostly, Sai simply adores young people with a passion for art. Her gallery specializes in this very thing, bringing up and coming talent to the public. It's a perfect fit for someone like Tezuka. I don't even know if she really wants to become a career artist, though. I guess that'd be the next logical step. I don't have the faintest idea. Like they say, teacher can only show the door. It's the student who has to walk through it. An old tired saying, but it's still quite true. He leaves to chat with the pair of second year girls, walking on some watercolors. Even though he said that cliche thing, it feels to me that Normia is trying to prod Vin through a certain door in particular. I can't blame him for that. I literally shoved Vin towards the, that door with this, my speeches about wasting opportunities and whatnot. Normia feels like this is the time for him to let Vin test her own wings. He has absolute confidence in this endeavor. I wonder why I can't shed the anxious feelings I have inside of me. It shouldn't have, any, it shouldn't have anything to do with me. Maybe I'm just bothered by exactly that. I really don't have any part of this. I would. I would like to be a part of Vin's life, and her a part of mine. Like friends should. That's what she called us. I wonder what she really meant. I feel like I'm so far apart from her, even when I'm not. The same as with Rin and Emmy. I can't understand her. What am I for her? I want to I want to be there for her. If she needs support from a friend, it's the least I can do. How can I call someone my friend if I can't be there when she needs me? Is that the right way? Problem is, I just realized that I didn't save. So I hope I didn't choose the wrong one. I think you should be fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with supporting friends, right? Can I call someone my friend if I can't be there for her when she needs me? Nomia's boisterous laugh fills the quiet uh, afternoon just as the club meeting ends. He pats one of the girls on the back encouragingly. Think about all the things that have led me up to this point. All the things I've shared with Vin during the few weeks I've been at Yamakuri so far. This ain't so very little in the end, but I'm sure for one thing, if I want to keep going with I have with Rin, I have to throw myself into whatever will come out of this exhibition project along with her. I turn my gaze back to the black mess of the sketch and the near-invisible guiding lines the teacher drew over it. No pattern emerges. I think that could take me further than I am. Put the graphite down on the table and think hard and honestly about what I really want. That's gonna be all for this time. This is me talking to Jug Gamer. Hope you enjoyed the series so far, and I'll see all you guys again next time. See you guys then.